I'm Dr. Heather Sanderson, and I'm here to tell you the top seven things that you can do to improve your cognitive function. The first thing is the ketogenic diet. I would say that this is about 50% of the benefit that you can get from an intervention from the Bredesen protocol. What I've seen is that my patients who get into ketosis do the best on this protocol. And when they do it quickly and commit to the process, they get their cognitive function back more than anyone else. The other thing that we've seen is that the higher you get those ketone numbers, the better you do with mood, motivation, good sleep, and that most important cognitive function. The second thing that is critical to reversing cognitive decline is movement and exercise. There are four different types of exercise that are really important to get if your goal is cognitive decline reversal or the reversal of Alzheimer's disease. They're aerobic exercise, strength training, dual task exercises that combine cognitive and physical exercise, and contrast oxygen therapy. The third component of reversing cognitive decline is bioidentical hormone replacement. This is important because it sends those trophic factors to your brain, telling them to produce new neurons and new connections. The fourth critically com critical component of reversing cognitive decline is optimal sleep. Sleep apnea causes cognitive decline. Sleep apnea can be a cause of dementia. So identifying and understanding and treating sleep apnea is really, really important. When we're sleeping, we also get rid of a lot of the toxins through the glymphatic system in our brains. So getting enough sleep, prioritizing sleep, and then optimizing how that, that quality of sleep crucially important to reversing cognitive decline. The next component of reversing Alzheimer's is detoxification. We know that toxins can directly cause neuronal dysfunction and misfiring. So it's important to get out all of those, the, the crud that stands in the way of optimal neuronal function. If we have work to do of getting rid of these toxins, it means that we can't do the work of creating new infrastructure. The, analogy that Dr. Bredesen uses is that if we are focused, if we think of our brains like a country, if our brain astan is focused on fighting and defending, if we're fighting infections or we're defending against toxins, then we can't use our resources to build infrastructure like new memories and new brain connections. So we need to do the detox work through our organs of elimination, our bowels, our liver, our kidneys, our skin and lymph, and our lungs in order to make sure that those toxins are not accumulated. Unfortunately, we live in a toxic world, in a toxic time, and so everyone is exposed to enough toxins that can affect their brain. What we can do to fight against this is just make sure that those natural systems of elimination are open and functional. And working with your provider to do this is crucial to getting that cognitive function back. The next component to reversing cognitive decline in Alzheimer's is brain stimulation. Our brains need to be stimulated, right? If you don't use it, you lose it. We need to stimulate our brains enough so that we stay engaged and we build those pathways. Many of us have seen someone who retires or, or stops working, stops engaging cognitively. And what you notice is that their world gets smaller and smaller and smaller. They are more easily overwhelmed. So we need to stay engaged. We need to stay involved. We need to keep challenging our brains. This can be through exercises like, um, like quizzing or, you know, participating in Jeopardy when it's on. It can be through Sudoku and crossword puzzles. However, what I most recommend is changing your lifestyle in these ways that we've already talked about. I think that the biggest boost for your brain is learning a new recipe, learning how to shop in a different way, learning a new type of exercise, a new dance, a new skill. These things not only help your cognitive function in and of themselves, but they are this process of doing bicep curls for your brain by stimulating new pathways. They challenge you in a way that creates this, these new connections, and you're also getting the benefits of implementing these lifestyle changes. So I highly recommend doing these things. Um, they also are, most importantly, they help with your, maintaining independence. So when you can cook for yourself, when you can do your own laundry, when you can continue to drive, all of these things really help to maintain independence, which is associated with mood um, as we age. Now, if you do Sudoku and if you do crossword puzzles, you might get better at those, but they're not associated with maintaining independence, which in my mind is the goal of all of these interventions. 
So I highly encourage you to, when you get into ketosis or when you get into changing your diet or starting these new exercise routines or learning how to use the CPAP machine to treat your sleep apnea, that you approach this with vigor and, and excitement, that these are those things, even though they can feel a little overwhelming or intimidating, these are the things that are going to help your brain, just the act of learning something new. I also love when people tell me that they're learning a new language or they're learning a new song on the piano that they're familiar with or they're picking up an entirely new instrument and learning that. Sometimes with a loved one, with a young, someone of a younger generation, a child or a grandchild. This is so exciting because not only do you get the, the new, the stimulation of learning something new, but you get that important component of community. Community is another critically important piece of reversing dementia. We have seen this at Marama, the residential care facility for the elderly that I created, uh, which is an immersive experience in Dr. Bredesen's protocol. When community is present, when we're not isolated, this helps mood, it helps our cognitive function in ways that we don't even fully understand. But we see again over and over again that when people have a peer group to uh, commune with, to celebrate with, to create with, to anticipate life events with, that they, they rise to that and, and improve in um, incredible and inspiring ways. The next component of reversing cognitive decline is adding those important nootropic factors. These are important nutrients, things like bacopa, citicoline. I, I won't give you a comprehensive list here. We'll do another video on that, but there are really important nutrients that help support cognitive function. And there are mushrooms and uh, vitamins, minerals, herbs that all help to support these in different ways. And when we stack them on top of each other, when we use them synergistically, we often get more benefit than even just using one of those alone. And that's true for all of this. When we just do the diet, we get some benefit. When we just do the exercise, we get some benefit. But when we start, start to add all of these things together, they work synergistically and we end up in a virtuous cycle rather than a downward spiral. And so I encourage you to jump in and dive in fully. And really, instead of just dipping your toe in, I know everybody's got their own pace, but instead of just dipping a toe in the water, dive into this and comprehensively engage with this material and start doing these things at home. It, my confidence goes up when you're comprehensively implementing the protocol, the younger you are and the earlier on in the disease process. Although I don't mean to dissuade anyone, just get started if you're worried about your cognitive health.